This morning on DC News Now, we're waking up to a few of those scattered showers out there, mostly across most of our Maryland areas, but starting to notice a few of those starting to clip, say Culpeper County right now. So timing it out when these finally move out and looking towards the rest of that seven day, it's all coming up. And breaking now, shattered by gunfire, Prince George's County rocked by a violent weekend. We have team coverage on the investigations along with reactions from neighbors who are calling for change. And vandal strikes. See the damage done at a DC Catholic school and what it's going to take to clean it all up. And playing the name game, how you can be part of deciding what a monkey born at the Virginia Zoo will be called. Good morning, a rainy start to our Monday morning commute for a lot of people across the DMV. This is the first time we're seeing that wet weather during the drive to work, and for some people, the drive to school. It is now 6 o'clock on this Monday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tania Wright. And I'm Corey James. Our team is here to help you plan your day this morning. Shanika Grimshaw uh, standing by with a look at some of the troubled spots on the roads. But we begin first with meteorologist Jackie Lair. How's the weather look this morning, Jackie? Oh, out there this morning, Corey, we're tracking a few of those rain showers. Those are mainly light right now. The heaviest of the rain is well off towards our north and east now. It did pass over Baltimore not too long ago, but now passing through portions of, say, southeastern most parts of Pennsylvania, now moving into southern New Jersey. But back here locally, we're seeing some rain showers, mainly around Frederick, Hagerstown as well. Even a few of those spotty showers from Germantown areas just to the south of there, down towards Silver Spring, Maryland right now. So zooming on in to show you just that passing shower just right along the beltway there and that will eventually slide its way off towards the east towards Bowie in about say I would say 20 to 30 minutes as we head farther off towards the north this is where a lot of the activity is right now it's mainly up towards say Westminster and continuing to push its way off towards the east there's a few lingering showers just to the east of Hagerstown right now and even right around Germantown as well a wider look at the the radar shows us we do have a batch of rain showers down towards our south that will continue to push its way just to the south of our area so really there's a few lingering sprinkles in between the showers off towards Towards our north and also the showers down towards our south and west. Visibility though has been reduced, especially back out towards Woodstock and Luray, where we're seeing down to at least a mile of visibility because of some patchy dense fog. So something else that you have to keep in mind this morning too if you're in that area. Temperatures though, as we're waking up into the 60s, low 60s back out towards Kaiser and Cumberland. We're right around 70 though in DC for the bus stop. So for the kids, make sure that they do have the umbrella just in case we do have those scattered showers through about 7 a.m. by about say 8 a.m. Could see some breaks in the cloud cover, but overall still we'll likely see mainly cloudy skies for your Monday and through the rest of the morning, a chance for a few of those showers here and there by about 9 a.m. Then these continue to subside, so we should see some dry times overall as we look ahead towards the latter half of your Monday. Just a few showers in the forecast tomorrow. More details coming up, but right now, toss it over to Shanika with the very latest on traffic. How's it looking at this hour? It's looking pretty good on the inner and outer loop of the Beltway, Jackie, right through New Hampshire Avenue 650. Now let's check out to be W Parkway if you're headed to the district or uh, Baltimore you're looking okay as well right near 202 is where you'll find you're going just fine there now we have a new crash reported uh, this is on 95 in Laurel not slowing anything down you can see you're all in the green but do watch for that as you're headed out that's right near the Patuxent River Bridge so again a 95 headed southbound actually is where you're gonna find that crash then the southeast southwest freeway still busy out there you can see all that red all that congestion there begin to build right near the third street tunnels where you're going to find that crash earlier we had three left lanes blocked hopefully it's getting better uh, as time goes on all right Shanika, thank you breaking now plagued by violence eight that is a number of shootings the gun violence archive recorded in dc and the dmv in the past 72 hours that means eight families and communities reeling trying to come to grips with that outbreak of violence and this morning we are hearing from people concerned about the rise in crime right now police are searching for several shooters they say we have live team coverage this morning our joseph almo is looking at the crime trends in prince george's county but we do begin our team coverage this morning with our lex Warris. so lex what do police say they know this morning well, Tanaya, there is a lot that investigators just don't know at this time. Police in Prince George's County were busy this weekend with fatal shooting after fatal shooting after fatal shooting. And four people are now dead. 
three men and one kid, a boy, who were all found shot in the streets of Prince George's County this weekend. Our contributor Larry Calhoun with DC Real Time News was able to make it to three of those scenes over the weekend. Just last night at 930, police were called to Barnabas Road where they found a man who had been shot and he was taken to a local hospital where he died just an hour before that. Another man found shot multiple times off of Twin Flower Place and he died on the scene. As you can see, our detectives are on the scene um, and they're also working behind the scenes uh, to um, investigate these incidents. That way um, the community can have answers as well as the families can have answers and um, be able to receive proper justice. And these shootings are still active investigations. No suspects or motives have been released by police at this time. And those two shootings that I mentioned, there were also two others that happened on Friday night and early Saturday morning. The victims of those shootings, one man and one kid, a boy whose age we do not know at this time. Police are also working to find out if any of these shootings are related or if they're all isolated incidents. Of course, as we find out more information, we'll bring it to you both here and online. For now, live from the Prince George's County Police Headquarters, I'm Lex Suarez, D.C. News Now. All right, Lex, thank you. Our team coverage continues this morning on the troubling trend across the nation right now. That's all involving a rise in crime. D.C. News Now's Joseph Olmo is in studio this morning breaking down those numbers in Prince George's County and the outcry for change. Good morning, Joseph. Hey, Corey, good morning to you. Well, this morning we are taking a closer look at what's really going on in Maryland's second largest county by population. There are just some, these are just some of the highlights, excuse me, from the Prince George's County Police Annual Report. Let's start off with just violent crimes in general. Here is the full five-year picture. Picture. Since 2017, there has been, on average, over 4,200 violent crimes in Prince George's County each and every year. These are the numbers from 2017 all the way until last year. We are talking murders, assaults, rapes, robberies. If you do the math, that means that there is, on a normal day, roughly 11 instances of those types of violent crimes being committed in the county. Those numbers are just staggering there. Now we're going to take a look at homicides, the murder rate, because that's where the data really gets disturbing. Again, specifically, we're talking talking the murder rate. According to that county police annual report, homicides were pretty steady from 2017 to 2018 and through 2019 and 2020, as you see there. They really, really shot up in 2021. If you take last year's average of 116 murders and you divide that by 365 days, that means that there was a murder in Prince George's County almost every three days last year. And it's something that has the community really heated. People are looking for answers because many of them tell us they just don't feel safe anymore in the places that they call home. This is a tweet that was sent out by our contributor, Larry Calhoun, over at DC Real Time News. We all know him. He said, folks, don't be afraid to demand the very best from your leaders. I'm never afraid to hold them accountable. The last four days, it's been homicide after homicide. He actually went on to say in that tweet uh, that community members deserve answers and the families as well. So you're already seeing those calls for change really getting louder on social media, but in person as well. This past Friday, the state's attorney for Prince George's County held a public safety rally. DC News Now's Yamari Sase was there. She covers the county for us. She said she saw several parents there who they themselves lost their kids to gun violence. The event dubbed Our Streets, Our Future. It included some music and some food, among other festivities. So another violent weekend in Prince George's County, but it hasn't just it isn't just what happened over the past 72 hours that's raising eyebrows with those crime trends headed in the wrong direction. We are hoping to hear from the county's top officials, including the executive, about what they're going to do to reverse this trend. Reporting here in the studio, I am Joseph Omo. Back to you guys. Thank you, Joseph. Well, this morning, the motive is still a mystery. Right now, police are trying to figure out why a man shot himself after driving to a barricade just outside of the U.S. Capitol. Officers have identified that suspect as 29-year-old Richard York III from Delaware. So here's what police say they know so far. York rammed his car into a barricade at East Capitol and 2nd Street Northeast early yesterday morning. That's when police say he stepped out of that burning vehicle, fired several shots into the air, and then shot himself. DC News Now spoke with people in that neighborhood about the scene. Very unnerving um, that it happened so close to not only our Capitol and the Supreme Court, but also to so many people's homes. The Capitol Police are now looking into that man's background.
Breaking now, Brittany Griner's legal team is appealing her prison sentence in Russia. She was sentenced to nine years in prison for drug possession last week. Lawyers for the basketball star told Russian news outlets that the appeal had been filed. Now, at this point, the grounds for that appeal are not yet clear. All right, your time right now with 609 on this Monday morning. New this morning, vandal strike leaving behind a trail of damage at a D.C. Catholic school. In a post on its website, St. Anthony Catholic School says a statue was knocked down and broken. A concrete window sill was also broken. Now, according to the school, three playground benches were pulled out of the ground and damaged as well. Your time right now is 6:10 this morning. Breaking now, families running for cover when shots ring out at Six Flags Great America just outside of Chicago. Overnight, police said three people were shot in the parking lot of that theme park. They say they believe those shots were fired from a vehicle. A mother is describing that scary scene. She tells her sister station that she and her daughter climbed over two fences and then hid. There's an active shooter. Get down, get down. Everybody gets down, and we're all laying on the cement, and we're, we don't know what's going on. Officers have been searching that area for anyone who is hiding or taking cover. Police say they are still searching for that shooter. Expanding eligibility right now, more people are able to get the monkeypox vaccine and DC Health is changing its criteria needed to make that possible, aligning with the CDC. Now, the change went into effect Saturday. The expanded eligibility includes anyone who has had multiple sex partners in the past two weeks, people who are sex workers and staff and businesses where sexual activity occurs. The changes apply to people who live, work or receive health care in DC. It also includes people of any gender or sexual orientation. You must be 18 or older to get the shot. Developing now a word of warning. The FBI and the Department of Justice are sounding the alarm. Threats towards federal law enforcement are ramping up in the days following the raid at former President Donald Trump's home. That raid at Mar-a-Lago came as part of the DOJ's investigation into possible violations of the Espionage Act by the former president. This morning, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are calling on members of their parties to ramp down on those recent attacks. California Congressman Adam Schiff leads the House Intelligence Committee. He denounced that rhetoric on Sunday on Face the Nation. The, the reaction of many of my Republican colleagues uh, and, and those around the former president to attack the FBI over this uh, and endanger FBI agents uh, mm -hmm. is just another uh, uh, damaging level of irresponsibility. In the days following that raid, some Republican members of Congress called for defunding the FBI. Happening now, another controversial trip. Several American lawmakers are overseas visiting with officials in Taiwan. One member of that delegation, Congressman Don Beyer of Virginia. The visit comes as tensions rise between the country and neighboring China. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi wrapped up her trip there just two weeks ago. Key topics on this trip include reducing those tensions and talking business with industry leaders.